Mathammer refers to using maths and statistics to understand the optimum way to play Warhammer 40k. In this video I'll cover what you need to know so you can do this yourself, and also some cool things that you may or may not know that will probably change the way you play the game. The common way to use this approach if you want to optimise a target choice for a particular gun, how to divide attacks to ensure you deal the maximum damage without wastage, or just looking at comparing one thing against another to see which is best, or more efficient for the points value. The basics start with the fact that the game is played with a six sided dice, and each number has a 1 in 6 or 16.6% .6 chance of occurring. If a unit describes its ballistic skill as a 3 plus, they are hitting on 3, 4, 5 and 6. This is 4 out of 6 or 2 thirds chance of happening depending on which way you represent it, and a 66.6% .6 chance of being successful. Let's look at an example of a 10 man squad of assault incessors lining up shots with their heavy bolt pistols. Each has a single shot, so the 10 in total. At their 3 plus ballistic skill, 4 in 6 of the 10 shots will hit, and that works works out to be 6.7 hits. You can round up to 7, but if you keep the position throughout the whole calculation, then it makes it more accurate. Let's say you're shooting with your strength 4 gun against 10 orc boys, which are toughness 5. This means you're wounding on 5s, so that's a 5 or a 6, and that's 2 in 6 chance, or 33.3% chance of wounding. In this example, you'll get 2.2 wounds through. Now assuming the orc is in the Blood Axes clan and they still get a 6 plus save to these wounds, that gives them 1 in 6, or a 16.6% .6 chance of actually saving it. However, we want to work out how many wounds were not saved, so we actually want the number of all the other dice, which is 5 and 6. Taking the hit ability, multiply it by the units, multiply it by the wound ability, and then multiplying by the unsaved ability, we get 1.85 wounds will go through. So statistically, one boy will die, but rounding up, you could probably say two. Now imagine instead of shooting against orc boys, you target 10 Gretchen. These are toughness three, and assuming they're in light cover, they'll still have a six plus save. So the hits are the same, but the wounding is easier. It's on a three plus, which is four and six. Instead of against the Gretchen, the wound count will be 4.4 wounds, and with the saving throw, there'll be 3.7 unsaved wounds going through. Therefore, three Gretchen are killed or four of you rounding up. If you want to be as efficient as you can, it makes sense to select the right target for each gun. It can be pointless shooting certain guns into certain units. You can take this even further and work out the impact your damage causes to your opponent's ability to deal damage back, then actually one orc could be more damaging back to you than three Gretchen. Working the maths on the particular return damage, however, since boys are more likely to get into melee with you than Gretchen, it'll actually be best to target the boy than the Gretchen because it's more likely to do damage back to you. Some really useful things to remember. The average of a decent is 3.5 so therefore the average of 2d6 is 7 and the percentage chance of actually getting a 7 out of 2d6 is 58%. When you are multiplying your probabilities of hit and wound the order in which you do it makes no difference. You do hits and wounds or wounds then hits. Rerolling ones to hit or wound will always give you a 16.6% .6 improvement in output no matter what the expected success should have been for that dice. Full rerolls equate to an increase in the output equivalent to the number of failed dice. For a 5 plus to succeed it's a full reroll so that's 4 and 6 dice are getting re Old, that equates to a 66.6% .6 increase in overall success. For 3 plus, you've got 2 out of 6 dice which you're re-rolling, that works out as a 33.3% increase. As statistically, you'd be re-rolling 2 out of every 6 dice. Buffs to hit and wound multiply, so if you stack them you get a greater return. If you re-roll 1s to hit and 1s to wound, then that 16.6% .6 improvement for each is actually multiplied together. So overall, you're getting a increase. Modifiers like plus one to hit or wound make a bigger difference in output for stats that are already worse. If you're wounding on a six only and you get a plus one, that is going to give you a 16.6% .6 improvement. Therefore, the overall chance of getting a five or a six is going to be 33.3% and this is a 100% improvement. If you're trying to go for fives and you get a plus one, that's going to be a 50% improvement. For fours, it's 33%, threes, it's 25% and twos, there's no improvement because ones always fail. These rules all apply for saves as well. Modifiers like minus one to hit, plus one to wound, plus one to save, etc. all multiply together. So stacking buffs defensively has a bigger outcome also. Your units will stick around longer. This is why Bellicor is so strong with his minus one to hit, no rerolls, and a plus one to wound. A note when deciding on weapon profile, particularly for some melee variants, which offer a big hitting mode and a less impactful mode, but with a lot more attacks. More attacks increase the reliability of dealing damage. While using the big hitting mode is tempting because of the higher potential, the probability of getting that larger result is pretty low. So for the more reliable approach, choose the many attacks mode, one reason why people choose titanic feet melee attack for knights over a special weapon as you get triple attacks. When you are charging, always consider how likely it is that you'll make your roll. To arrive from deep strike 9 inch from your opponent and then charge, you'll only have a 28% chance of making a 9 on that dice. Using a 1 CP re-roll to try again will actually take your chance up to 48%. Plus 1 to charge has a bigger percentile benefit on a larger charge distance. On a 9 inch distance with a plus 1 to charge, it'll actually take it up to 42%. And then with the CP re-roll, up to 64%. For those that like doing long bomb charges, the chance of hitting 12 on a charge is only 3%. 
A quick comment on psychic powers like Smite. The chance of Smite succeeding in a warp charge of 5 is 83%. The chance of getting a Super Smite is only 8%. If your army can use smite a lot, then it's worth knowing that with each increase in warp charge value, the chance of smite working dramatically reduces. So your second smite is going to be 11% less likely to happen, the third smite 14% less likely again, and the fourth smite 16% less likely again. Having a plus one to cast takes your smite percentage from 83% to 92%. Hope this was interesting and helpful. Let me know if there's anything more you want to know. Don't forget if you want to support the channel, you can become a member. There's loads of cool perks and you can join us on Discord. Otherwise, see you again soon. Bye.